Miller's planet is a fictional planet featured in the film Interstellar, Dr. by Christopher Nolan. It is one of the planets orbiting a black hole named Gargantua, and it plays a critical role in the plot of the film. The planet's name is derived from Dr. Laura Miller, the first biologist and astronaut who landed on the planet and activated the thumbs up beacon before realizing the planet's hostility. Although it physically appears as a beautiful and serene planet, it is a nightmare world with many interesting characteristics that need to be explained. Here are some key details about Miller's planet. Number one is time balance. One of the most important characteristics of Miller's planet is its proximity to the black hole Gargantua, which causes an extreme time dilation effect on the planet and its orbit. This is why the Endurance does not actually orbit the planet, but actually performs a wider orbit around the black hole while being parallel to the planet. This is precisely why Dr. Romley does not feel the effects of time dilation while waiting for his fellow crew members. The time dilation is due to the extreme gravitational pull from the black hole. Anything trapped under the black hole's gravity will experience time dilation, and because Miller's planet is the closest planet to Gargantua, it has an extreme time dilation effect, thus causing time to pass much more quickly than outside the gravitational field. Dr. Mann's planet also orbits Gargantua but is much farther away and experiences no time dilation compared to Miller's planet. Kip Thorne was hired by Christopher Nolan as the scientific advisor for the film and Kip provided complex equations that worked out to be so that one hour spent on Miller's planet meant seven years outside the gravitational pull. For comparison, the film came out nine years ago, meaning that only a little over an hour would have occurred on the fictional planet since the film's release. This is not to say that anybody who spends too long on the planet would actually age much slower compared to their counterparts elsewhere. They would not actually feel the effects of aging slower. Time spent on Miller's planet feels the same, but the sheer gravitational pull from the black hole simply stretches time for the living organisms without them actually feeling any physical effects. The planet is so close to the black hole that some have questioned how it has not actually fallen into the black hole itself. One of the speculative reasons for this is that Kip Thorne made sure that Gargantua was a rapidly spinning black hole. The physics of rotating black holes differ from non-rotating ones. The sheer speed of Gargantua's rotation means that there is a single stable orbit just outside of Gargantua's event horizon, where gravity and the centrifugal force created by the spinning black hole actually balances out, and this particular stable area is exactly where Miller's planet resides. Another interesting characteristic of this planet is its climate. The daylight you see on the planet could be actually coming from multiple different sources. One of those sources would actually be from the black hole itself. You might ask, how can a black hole emit light? I mean, it's literally called a black hole. This is because Gargantua's accretion disk actually contains dust and gases reaching the temperature of our sun's surface. This gives off light and heat to Gargantua's planets, including Miller's planet. Another source for the light seen on the planet could be actually coming from another star. During the film, Cooper mentions a neutron star. Look, I, I could swing around that neutron star. A neutron star is a celestial object of very small radius and very high density, composed predominantly of closely packed neutrons. They give off very faint light compared to other stars, but this neutron star is close enough to Miller's planet that its light would be seen from planet side. Next, the planet's surface has no visible signs of dry land and is globally covered in an ocean, with massive tidal waves reaching hundreds of feet. Why exactly do these massive waves exist? The leading theory is that they are caused by the planet's close orbit around the black hole. The extreme gravitational pull is so strong that it generates humongous swells of water. The same phenomenon also occurs on Earth, although with much less dramatic effect. The tides on Earth are the result of combined gravitational attraction of the Earth and the Moon. The Moon pulls on the Earth's mantle and ocean to create tidal forces. However, the effect on Miller's planet is much more severe and the waves are the size of mountains, capable of tearing apart any human-made structure on the planet's surface. Another interesting phenomenon on this planet is the extremely shallow ocean. The entire surface of Miller's planet is covered by an ocean that is only a few meters deep at certain parts. The ocean is so shallow in these areas that the Ranger space shuttle is able to land directly on it and the crew members are able to wade through the water as if they were on a beach. Next let's talk about the planet's atmosphere. The planet's atmosphere is not actually shown in great detail in the film but is likely similar to Earth's given that it is able to support an ocean and the weather conditions observed in the film. However, the atmosphere may be more turbulent than Earth's due to the extreme tidal forces caused by the black hole. Dr. Amelia Brand describes the planet as sterile in accordance with the data findings of Dr. Laura Miller. The crew members do not actually take off their helmets during their brief stay, suggesting that the air is not breathable. We do not know exactly what the air composition is, but it is one that is toxic to humans. 
Another interesting characteristic about this planet is its gravity, which is described as a punishing 130% compared to Earth's standard. That means that someone like me or you would weigh 30% more than they normally do, making it extremely difficult to move around. This partly explains why Bran and Dwarf were so slow to flounder through the shallow water and possibly why Dr. Bran could not stand up from under the equipment, which would also weigh 30% more on the planet. Overall, Millis Planet is a harsh and inhospitable environment where the time dilation effects make it an extremely dangerous place for human exploration. The planet hosts water, hydrocarbons, and organics but hosts actually no life forms, at least none that are actually discovered. Its role in the film highlights the challenges and dangers of interstellar travel and underscores the importance of careful planning and preparation in any such missions. That's it for this video, thank you for watching.